Hey, this is Zanya Winans, and you are watching the Best Practices Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And if you're looking for a competitive edge, a way to drive more traffic to your website, it's coming and we have got a secret that really a lot of people don't know about. And in, today we're gonna to be talking about how you can double the traffic to your website in 2019. And it's gonna be through this thing called video, which is gonna completely dominate the marketplace and I'm going to share with you why in a little bit with our resident expert Zanya Winans and our X-Files on marketing. She is brilliant. You do not want to miss this. So do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. You are going to love this. Now, as we always do, we're shooting this live. So if you have questions, feel free to add them to the feed. Send me your toughest question and I'll give them to the expert while we have her on the broadcast. Or if you're watching them later on, you still have questions add the questions to the feed and we'll be so happy to have Zani get back to you because we want you to get the most out of this. Also share these videos with your team members. What a great opportunity for them to get the education they need to make them better. Um, keep sending us suggestions for shows. Uh, again, we're up over 39,000 followers on Facebook, over 150,000 of you have visited us on iTunes and I don't have anything to say, but thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And my guest today. So my guest today, and my, uh, well, I, I don't know, I, you know, I describe you like this all the time, Zanya. You're one of those people, there's a lot of great people in dentistry, but you're the person, you're one of the people I think most fondly of, not only as a coach, as a, a colleague, as an advisor, as a resident expert when it comes to marketing. While we do the coaching, you're the person I go to most often on everything marketing, and you've just been there for us and our clients long term. Now, I know who you are. A lot of people watching the show know who you are, but if somebody's watching this for the first time and they don't know who Zanya is, give them a little background. All right. Well, thanks for the great intro. So um, I own Golden Proportions Marketing, which is a full service dental marketing agency. That means we are looking at every possible way to market a practice. And we've been doing this for 18 years. And uh, pretty much, I, if it's out there, I have seen it. I can tell you if it works. I can tell you if it's going to waste your money. And I love the idea that we get to share these really cool new ideas that are coming out in marketing. Yeah, it's awesome. And so and today we're going to be talking about... Um, one of the things that's really not new, but it's coming in a big wave, and that is video. Like you were describing to me what you heard, and it was blowing my mind so much that I was dual processing. I'm like, that's so heavy. And so if you're watching this, I'm so excited you're going to hear this. But Zanya, give us the why behind this and tell us where you heard this. Why is video so important, and where did you hear this information? Okay, so everybody knows that video is important, but it is only growing in importance. Um, so Google is about to come up with this brand new feature in search so that when someone is on Google and they are looking up some type of search, like how do I whiten my teeth at home? What happens if my child's tooth gets knocked out? Video is going to go to the very top of the list. And the way that they're going to do that is by literally being able to read the content in your videos and it will be able to start playing the video right in exactly the correct spot to answer that person's question. So doctors, if you want to be incredibly competitive in your market, and this is a great way to get a jump on your competitors that aren't doing video, this will pop you right to the top of the search engines for those types of searches. Video is, I mean, Kirk, you know the power of video. You've been mm -hmm. doing it for years. It's amazing. But one of the things that I love about video is the way that people use it and retain the information. So everybody thinks of their website as like almost like an online brochure. There's pretty pictures and there's a lot of text in there. But ultimately, how much of it are people retaining? How much is sticking up there? Believe it or not, it's only 10%. If someone is watching a video, your retention rate jumps to like 85 or 90%. 
because we don't want to read things. We just skim them. But if you can actually watch it, it's going to sink in and it's going to stick with you. And people will know that's the provider to go to because they're the expert. Yeah. You look at these upcoming generations of people. When I look at my children, they're Snapchatting. They don't use their phones as phones. Everything is either a short video, a long video, or they're doing all their learning on YouTube. They're watching their shows on YouTube, Netflix. Everything is video. Now, I also know two people, when, when, when somebody sees video, they see it as expertise. You get this all the time. I'll be speaking and somebody will come up and reference something. And I'm like, where'd you hear that? And they go, I saw it on YouTube. And I'm like, okay, you're referencing YouTube as a credible source or site. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, that's interesting. So video is not going away. And it is so, it's so powerful. Now, can I ask you really quick? Because I know the answer to this, but how are they going to find that place in the video when you start producing content as a dentist or a dental office? How will they, how will Google be able to show traffic where to go in the video? Great question. So this is where doctors, you're still going to have to do a little bit of extra work. You can't just shoot the video, throw it on your website and think that Google's going to be able to read what people are saying. While talk to text is getting better, the artificial intelligence isn't completely there. So you have to get that video transcribed. Now, that does not mean that your team needs to sit in front of the computer and literally type out word for word for word. There's some really super easy services out there that will transcribe your video for you. What Google is going to be looking for is for you to break it down with time codes. So as you start talking about something in your transcription, it might say 001 seconds to one minute, two seconds. And then what the text is that you're talking about during that one minute or the further you break it down, the more specific it can be. So as long as you have word for word what is said in your video and you have time codes with it, Google is going to know exactly where to find it and where to start playing it. You could have an entire five minute video on cosmetic dentistry. And if someone did a search for whitening and you talk about it at three minutes and two seconds, it will know to start the video at exactly that spot. Yeah. Now you think about how helpful that is, even as a as, a, as somebody who's searching something on Google, because I can see all the TED Talks, but I often don't want to listen to a whole TED Talk to find the one segment that I'm looking for. And it's so powerful. I think the power in Google is that when I type exactly what I'm looking for, it takes me exactly to the spot I want to be. So this is absolutely incredible. Um, and, and the other thing I would say about this too, Zanya, and I'll just piggyback on this. Everyone has said they're going to all chips on video. Facebook said it more than a year ago. They're going all chips in on video and they want to beat Google. Um, you know, they just do. And so this is going to be really fascinating in the future. Now, I would imagine if I'm a dentist watching this, I'm like, Sonia, I work on teeth all day. Okay, like you're telling me to do video. I hate doing videos. I mean, I don't want to hire somebody professionally to come in. Do I have to do that? I would imagine that's some of the questions that are coming up. So great question. Um, while professional video looks really, really good, um, and it, it can be a small investment. I mean, it's not uncommon for it to cost like four to $6,000 for someone to come in for a day, shoot five to eight different types of videos, get them professionally polished. That's not small if you want to just get started and test video. There are some incredibly inexpensive tools to be able to do this in your office, on your own. And doctors, it doesn't have to be you. It should be your team that's doing this stuff for you. Yeah. So Kirk, you probably have a pretty expensive video setup, right? Because you do this all the time. Well, we started pretty simple and then it gets more and more complex because <laughs> then you see better tools and you see, oh, that's pretty cool. But yeah, you know, I remember the first thing that we bought was a little microphone from Radio Shack and it plugged right into the camera. And it was twenty five dollars because we learned that audio was an important part of video. And mm -hmm. um, and I we see this happen with dental teams all the time. This iPhone X thing or whatever you call it, the quality of video gets better with every generation of it. I mean, it's come so far. So I think that the key in video is start crappy, like just start and then get going. And it's going to get better as you get more creative, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's about practice. It's like anything that you do. I mean, I'm betting if I looked at your first best practices show compared to the ones you're doing now, they're night and day because you're yeah. just totally used to it. You've learned your lessons. So before you make a gigantic investment in expensive equipment, I agree. I think the phones have unbelievable video capability. 
And you can get some tools on Amazon. I literally, so like I have samples here just to show everybody. I got a tripod for my phone. It costs about $20. It lets me position everything. It comes with a remote control. So if I'm recording my own videos, I can stop and start without leaning into it. There's a ring light that's actually on my computer right now you can put on your phone. It was maybe $10. And that lavalier mic that cost you $25 back then is maybe $10. And it'll plug right into your phone. You can get all the equipment you need aside from the phone you already have for $30 or $40 on Amazon. And it'll make your videos look 10 times more professional than just shooting it with a camera in your hand. Yeah, and let's just say people do like the authenticity of somebody just on video, even when a dentist, like some of the fun things that we get to see in dentistry is just a dental team being themselves. Like you're like, that is really cool or it's really funny. So what are the best videos that you've seen from your doctors? I'm curious. Like what are some really cool ones that stand out for you? Well, sometimes like they'll just surprise the dentist. Obviously people are doing the whole, they'll do the dance thing, but celebrating a team member on a day like that. You know, the, the videos that we find the most fascinating are more culture or core values based than they are technically based because while many dentists like to post great cases they've done, that's wonderful, but I always love to see the people behind the machine and go, those are cool people. So whatever it is, I think you got to talk about what you care about in your video. So if you care about culture, great. If you talk about quality, it's great. If you like relationships, make them about relationships, right? Because in the end, your messaging is going to attract people that are attracted to that particular message. And they also have a very high quality, you know, BS detector. Now people can tell when you're like, that guy's so fake, you know what I mean? Like, or they, I don't know. That's just my thought. I like the videos where you're like, Oh, that is so like cool. And you can tell that probably wasn't rehearsed. <laughs> so I love those too, but those are actually going to kind of come after the fact. So if you want to use video for search, if you want to drive more traffic to your website, which ultimately is how you get people to see the cool videos of you, 80% of search is informational, meaning that someone is going online because they are doing research on something. They want to, they want a how to video. They want to learn why something works the way that it works. They want tips and tricks. They want to know hacks. If you can record videos that get into that informational search, but that doesn't mean they have to be boring. I mean, you can do them with personality and with fun. The whole point is for them to see that video, they're going to have to click on the link, go to your site to see that video that answers the question they were searching for. And then once they're on your site, then you can really show off the personality. It can go hand in hand, but just cool videos of a doctor dancing because they know how to dance. Well, that's fun and that's great on social media. That's not going to do a darn thing for them when it comes to Google search. So you kind of need both, I think. Yeah. And one of the things that you've taught us really well is how people search. They'll actually type a specific phrase. So are you talking about that? Like find out those specific phrases, like how do dental, in, dental implants work? Or mm -hmm. you, you know, when you're reverse engineering the search, I would imagine that's going to be more beneficial in creating the video. So you could create a video that says, how do dental implants work? I get that question a lot as a dentist. And I have patients that come in every day that ask that exact question. How to, well, let me share with you how dental implants work. Wouldn't that be a good one? Or no? That's exactly how you do it. So I think, honestly, the best place to start is with your patients. Doctors and teams should just start writing down a list of all of those questions you get over and over and over again from patients. The, what does something cost? How much does my insurance cover? Um, it, it, you know, what do I do when there's an emergency? How do I know if I need a root canal? All of these questions that you get every single day, write them down. And then what you do is you, you don't want to just do exactly what the question is. You want to go into Google search and you type in whatever that question is you get from your patient. When you scroll to the bottom, it's going to give you some recommended other alternate search phrases. So you might just type in cost of dental implants. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see 10 different ways that people ask that question. So you want to find different approaches to just because it, you think it's what your patients are looking for. Google's going to tell you what people are really, really searching for. And then that's when you create that video that answers that patient question. I mean, I, I don't think there's your patients are telling you exactly what they're searching for. They're just asking it to your face when they're in the office. So use that for it. Right. 
Absolutely. Now, how, how long before we actually see this? Is it, we, we don't know. We're just guessing by the end of the year, beginning of the year, like when is this going to happen? So Google is sort of beta testing this in a couple of smaller markets like they usually do. They start in like, well, I don't know if smaller, but like San Francisco is usually one of their test markets because it's close to home for them. Um, they might be trying it in a couple of cities around the country and they're just going to test it for the next couple of months. We should start to see it evolving in 2019. The thing is, Google doesn't tell us, hey, we're going to start with the West Coast and move all the way over to the East Coast. So you don't know when it's going to hit your market. The sooner you're creating these videos and getting them ready, the more likely Google will have indexed it and you're going to be at the top of the search when it starts to come to your market. Mm -hmm. So That's it'll all. be it'll be hitting in 2019. It'll just sort of gradually roll out throughout the country. Yeah, and just a reminder, it's called Google Featured Video. Google that Featured Video. It is going to pop it to the top of your search. And since we know people are lazy, they, they want to watch, they don't want to read, mm -hmm. that is going to be number, one of their number one choices when it comes to actually looking at the results. If you could watch a video versus reading an article, what are you going to go to? I, yeah, I can imagine they probably have Google sponsored feature video too, which is going to be paying to have your video placed higher, right? Well, they probably want to get people used to the concept first, but then, yeah, I'm going to bet you're going to be able to pay for it. Yeah. You pay for pretty much anything these days. And it's so true. That's so true. So what else do I need to know as a dental office? Like, okay, I get it, Zanya. And um, what else would you say, hey, look, these are important places to start with video if you're a dental office and you're watching this? Um, so there's a couple of different kinds of videos that you can do because you don't want to just end with those informational videos, the, the how to's of the world. You want to make them kind of fun. And you also want to just start getting used to video and use, uh, use it for like brand video. So informational videos is how does a CEREC work? A brand video is an office tour or come meet our team or patient testimonials. All of those are really valuable, and those should all still be transcribed and put up on your website. Um, a good place to start with this is YouTube. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, YouTube is the second most popular search engine after Google. And Google owns YouTube. So if you've got your video on YouTube and you're getting it properly optimized, that's also going to increase your chances of showing up in search. Mm -hmm. So you guys are using um, YouTube all the time, right? You have a big YouTube channel. Right. Yeah. And that's really the hub. So we, while we shoot it live on Facebook, that's where it's being projected. Ben takes the asset, puts it on YouTube, and then we take the code from that and put it on our site where applicable. Do you know what I mean? So all roads go to YouTube somehow. Okay. So people are searching on YouTube kind of the same way that they are searching on Google but the other half of this equation isn't just um, getting to the top of the search engine. If someone's searching Google or YouTube, it's what's going to get them to click on this video and watch it so they're exposed to my brand. Mm -hmm. And that's about the whole conversion thing that you and I have talked about the past couple of podcasts that we've done together. Conversion is about getting inside somebody's head and making them feel like you can solve their problem for them. If right. you just had a video that the headline was something like how to whiten your teeth, sure, you, you might make it to the top of the search, but that could be really boring to listen to. You're thinking this is gonna be very technical. Instead, if you write a really cool headline for your video that's maybe um, how to get a Hollywood white smile, strangers will stop you in the street. Something that's going to appeal to that emotional nature. Why am I going to do this? Why do I care about looking at this video? That is where you're going to get your conversion, where people are actually going to click on it and watch it and get to see your brand. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to go just beyond the what am I shooting, but why do people want to watch this? Yeah, that is so great. That is absolutely fantastic. You know, I'd imagine you could have patients. I mean, there's the, the, the possibilities are tremendous on all of these things. Just creating a system in which you could produce video on a regular basis would probably be a good idea. I love it, actually. If teams get used to it, like you said, they just, they've got to get used to doing it. It could be a every Friday kind of a thing that you have a featured patient every Friday that you start shooting a testimonial video for. Mm -hmm. um, and Again, think of it like you don't want to just shoot a patient that talks about having sedation dentistry. 
you could shoot a video that's, I used to be terrified of the dentist, learn my secret how um, I came to love going to the dentist. I, obviously, I'm, I'm making titles up in my head here, but just look for that emotional niche to get them to actually want to care about it. Yeah. I mean, you guys are, you've been shooting video for a couple of years. How long did it take you until you got really comfortable with it? Well, I think after a couple months, you just find, you know, one thing is you just play to whatever your strengths are. And I'm not the smartest guy, but I like to talk a lot sometimes, you know, and so just having some fun with it, any activity that you do, if you can, the more fun you have, the more effective it's probably going to be. But to your point, yeah, it took, it took about six months and you learn constantly. You learn constantly what to do, what not to do. You learn about pre-production, post-production, all that kind of stuff. And we found that most effective is when we're just having fun. And we're finding good things that people love to talk about. We're entering the conversation people are already having in their own heads, which is a big part of that is just listening in your marketing. Absolutely. I think a big thing that people don't think about is once they create this video, don't just let it live on your website. It mm -hmm. needs to be pushed out and promoted everywhere. I mean, you guys do a fantastic job of this. But every video you do should get pushed out on, um, on Facebook. You can mm -hmm. put it on your LinkedIn channel. You can throw it on Twitter because you want to get a lot of views to start to see how people are interacting with your video. Uh, do you ever go in on the back end of Facebook and look at the analytics for how people are interacting with your videos, like where their, their fall off point is and how long they're sticking around and watching it? Yeah, occasionally we'll go back and you can see it's all over the place. You can see when somebody starts to promote something, it tails off. Or if somebody talks about something boring, it tails off. But really, when they talk about things that are a little controversial or a little bit edgy or a little, that's what it spikes. So you can see the analytics. You can also see time of day. There's a lot of factors that go into the analytics, but everything is run by analytics. Heck, we're watching the baseball, you know, National League World, you know, um, series and American League, everything is run by analytics now, almost too much, you know, so it's um, analytics tell you a lot. Yeah, so I think it's totally worth, you know, share it as many places as you can, because you want to see what people like about your videos, which is going to help you make them better. Right. The vast majority and the closed captioning, by the way, you have to. So that whole point of transcribing your videos 85% of videos that are watched on Facebook are watched with the sound off. People really? read the, it's, so this is so counterintuitive where we just said people don't read and they only retain 10% of what they read, but 85% of them want to read the captions on your video as opposed to actually listening to it. That hurts Isn't my that brain. Backwards? That is backwards. <laughs> okay. Well, if that's true, so, you got to have the cap even on a regular video. Would you always have the captions on a regular video or not? I would say you're going to want them definitely for Facebook. You won't necessarily want them for YouTube, but you got to have that transcription for Google search anyway. Right. So you might as well throw that closed captioning on your, uh, your, I think about the only 15% of people that bother to watch a video with the audio on are doing it unintentionally. So I have an Amazon Fire that is just like my easy tablet for next to the bed. And it drives my poor husband crazy because it's automatically set and I cannot change it to save my life. If you're scrolling through Facebook, the, even if you are going past it for a millisecond, it starts automatically playing the video out loud. So you hear it whether you want it to or not. Yeah. And it's funny because it's the most annoying thing in the world that you want to turn it off. And you, you, I have to intentionally, every time I go to Facebook on the fire, I have to turn the audio down so I don't have to hear it. I would want to listen to that video in any other channel, just not in Facebook. I just want to read Facebook. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it absolutely, you, you've got to have those closed captions on Facebook, but I wouldn't put them anywhere else, really. Interesting. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> What else do so, I need to know? <laughs> what else do you need to know? Um, DIY videos are great. That's a big part of search in YouTube. People want to know how to do it themselves, which again, you know, you don't necessarily want to teach somebody a DIY of, of home teeth whitening or dentistry on your own, but anything that you can think of that is a DIY, like how to floss properly 
or the best way to brush a baby's teeth. Um, that stuff is really important that they can learn how to do it themselves. And that'll build you as an expert that they can trust. Yeah. Outstanding. So oh. those, those are great. Um, a couple of other like really important tips to think about. You got to get to the point fast. 10 seconds or less, or you lose people's attention almost immediately. If you look at the statistics in Facebook of the drop-off, it'll actually tell you what percentage of your um, video views are three seconds or less. Mm -hmm. And it's way more of them than you would actually want to know. You might think, yeah, I got 500 views of my video, but if 400 of them are people just literally seeing it because they're skimming by in the newsfeed, you've lost them. Right. So you have very little time. Get to the point of what you're going to teach somebody in order to capture them and engage them like right out of the gate. Love it. Love it. And I would also say um, it's really important to know what you want somebody to do at the end of the video. We forget about call to action. We just kind of think, okay, we're on screen. And yeah, like, so maybe we have a great patient testimonial video and that patient is telling your story. Well, when the patient's done telling the story, that's not when the video ends. That's when the doctor or the team needs to jump back on camera. I mean, you edit this in and talk about that call to action. So we took amazing care of Mary Smith in our practice today. This is what we do for patients all over the place. Invite people in. Tell them what that next step is you want them to take. Yeah, you always have to have a call to action and a reason and maybe starting with a question and then the next step which would be calling the office to schedule. Just call and speak to one of our experts, you know, in our office and we'll answer your questions. Something. Absolutely. Man. So video is just, it's not that intimidating. I think it's one of these things doctors have got to get ahead on because if they don't, their competition's going to be all over it and they're going to get pushed way down the list on Google. Yeah. Everybody's looking for an advantage. What a great advantage it is to just show people who you are and do it in a way that it's natural and get everybody involved. The team, your team is looking for a fun way to help you. What a great opportunity this is. So Absolutely. this is awesome. Now, Zania, I know if I'm a dentist watching this, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. I'm like, hey, look, easy for you to say. You're one of those people that's, you're very giving, you're willing to just sit down and do a marketing strategy call with them on videos. And, you know, you don't, you don't even have to buy anything from you. Just talk to you. I, I do that all the time. I'll call you and go, help me. And you go, okay, I'll help you. <laughs> Um, also, you guys are in this fall, you're giving away a, a whole big marketing package. Can you tell us about that? Like you, you're offering quite a bit away for free, like $40,000 worth of stuff for free. It's, it's a contest though. So tell us it about is. the contest. So um, we kind of had this, like this discussion in the office about, we have had the most amazing year and you know, you're coming up on the Thanksgiving season and what do we do to just say thank you to people? So we are doing what we call kind of like the 12 days of Christmas. This is going to be our 12 day 40 K dental marketing giveaway. We are giving away 12 different things. We're giving away a completely custom website. We're giving away a custom photo shoot. We're going to do a custom video shoot so we can take advantage of all of this. Come into your office with a professional crew. So um, start looking November 3rd. You'll see it on our website. You'll see it in our social media. You can enter to win. There is zero cost. Literally nothing. We just want to get back. So you just put your information in there and we are going to pick a prize winner every single day, free year of SEO, social media. So 12 different practices have the chance to win something that'll really help boost their new patients next year. That's awesome. I love it. Now, Zanya, keep in mind, people, some people are listening to this on iTunes. If I'm listening, how can I find this or find more of you or reach out to you? Absolutely. So again, um, it, you were right on the money. I love just talking to people. I'm happy to do like a, let's look at your videos together and I'll tell you what you can do to make them stronger or where you even need to start. Go to our website, goldenproportions.com. And um, you're going to see our contact information on there. You can just email me directly, Zanya, X-A-N-A at goldenproportions.com. Or you can call me, our phone number's on the website. I am happy to sit and talk with you and just bang out some ideas for how to make your video absolutely amazing and how to use it properly in search. Um, and so anybody who wants to call, you can quick schedule. There's a scheduling button right on our, our site. You can schedule a consultation and we'll just sit and chat and make you a video hero. 
Uh, that sounds good. Now, I did get a question here before we say goodbye. Our good friend Deepak asked a question. How, how important is creating a sense of urgency as part of a call to action? Well, that's kind of pretty important with almost anything, but I'm going to say it depends on the type of video. So if this is like someone doing an informational search, if we're talking about videos for Google search, that call to action should be a little softer because you're trying to position yourself as a trusted expert. You don't want to make that the you must call right now um, to get scheduled in our practice. It, it should just be this video means you can trust me. I'm a good person. If you've got a particular promotional period that's going on, yes, your call to action should be stronger. It's, it, I think that's one of those things we should honestly talk out because it's just going to depend on the topic and the video. Right. Dentistry, people are a little nervous, so softer sell is not always a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, good question. Good question. Great answer. So Zanya, super grateful. Every single time you're on, you offer something incredible. Now I've got some work to do. <laughs> get ready <laughs> for Google, Google featured videos. It's coming, you know, and I'm not surprised that uh, something like this is on the horizon. So thank you so much for being on. My pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you guys for watching the Best Practices Show. If, if you enjoyed today, which I know you did, just do us a favor. Hit the share button, share it with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions for shows that you want to see with Zanya or any other topic. And we'll do our best to line these up. Um, and I guess until we see you next time, keep watching the Best Practices Show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.